I actually cried in front of my class and I was really upset at myself because I was like, how could you do this? And you know, they're never going to respect you at this point. What's up guys? Welcome back. Um, I know you guys are like, where have you been? So I decided to make a video because we need to talk. Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Q or Teach Queen Q, whatever you wanna call me. If you're not new here, then you already know that this is my first year of teaching and I was in college last year, I graduated in May, school started in August. I took you guys through most of my college experience where you know I was doing student teaching and all that and then it all came to a halt <laughs> right before school started and you're like girl how you gonna leave us hanging what you been doing what's going on well let me just tell you my intentions for this channel were to help people in the education field or people who want to get into the education field and maybe they look like me or they just don't know where to start so um those were my intentions for this channel but somewhere along the way i just kind of decided i was going to take some time for myself um, because i realized that as a teacher you live in a glass house and so what you say and do online can possibly get you in trouble so um, i just decided to stay off because i just didn't know what i was going to walk into and i didn't want to cause any problems or have any parents upset with me so that is why you guys haven't seen me in a while on top of the fact that this has been the most, um, I don't even know what word I can use to describe my first semester, my first year of teaching, but I can just say that like now that I've had a couple breaks and I've had some time to reflect, I've learned a lot and I want to share it with you. So um, the first few weeks were so intense. Okay, so let me backtrack a little bit. Y'all, I worked in the hospital. I worked 12 hour shifts. Um, so I worked Saturday, Sunday at the hospital from 7 a to 7 p. And then on Monday through Friday, I would be at the school. And our contract for teaching started the first week of August. So I had meetings Monday through Friday at the school. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I was at my job at the hospital. So I had no days off. So it was like I hit the ground running. So I didn't even really have a break. I mean, I had a break over summer, but I didn't have a break between those two jobs and it was almost like I was back in school again. So we went through those trainings and we found out that school was gonna be starting virtually. Y'all remember this, I was sitting in my room or trying to figure out if I was gonna sit in my room because the kids were gonna be virtual for a few weeks. Well, so I was so, so nervous for the first day of school because I mean, I was gonna be on the computer and I was like, this is weird. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a whole whirlwind of stuff that I was just like, am I ready? Can I do this? And on top of that, my coworkers were also like, you know, this was new for them as well. So it wasn't like I could come to them and ask them like, hey, how do I do this? So I was learning how, I was having to learn how to be a teacher and how to be a teacher online. Um, I have this really big thing about like making a good first impression. Well, I did not make the best first impression with one parent and I felt so bad, felt so bad. So yeah, anyways, thinking back now, I just cringe. I cringe y'all. Um, we had got an email from somebody. I don't even remember, but they said that school started at 830. I sent it out to the parents. The parents were like, okay. This one parent asked me if school started at 8.30 because it normally starts at eight. And I was like, yeah, 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 8.30. I know it's a different time than normal, but 8.30. Anyway, school did start at eight. And I just felt like I did not make the best first impression on this parent because you don't even know what you're talking about. You don't know what time school starts. So I felt so bad, I apologized so much. I felt so bad. But um, I kind of got over it because I was like, you know what? I wanted to blame somebody, but at the end of the day, that was one thing I didn't even ask when I got hired. What time does school start? Never did I think to ask that. So if it's your first year of teaching, make sure you ask what time school starts and what time the kids get there. 
because that's pretty important. <laughs> Another thing that I thought of, like being a teacher during this pandemic, a new teacher during this pandemic, it sucks. It sucks because you don't you don't already have those um, systems in place like the other teachers do. Um, you already don't know where everything is. And so I just kept feeling like I was constantly on the hamster wheel, you know, when everybody else was actually running around. And I don't like to feel like that. I like to know what I'm doing so that, you know, if anybody ever asks me, I can be the one to tell them. But me not knowing and then not being able to get up and go ask somebody else, it frustrates me. So when we finally transitioned to in-person learning, that was a whole nother beast, okay? Because at that point, then I had like, okay, so when we were virtual, you know, the kids would be on. And then after so long, you could be like, log off and log back on at this time because that's what time we're going to start science or whatever. And, you know, it was cool. And their parents were there helping them. And I could see, you know, some students need a little more help than others. But, you know, there was always somebody, not always, but there, most time there was somebody there who could help them, you know, find a page number. Now, mind you, I'm teaching first grade. There was typically somebody there who could help or I could get, you know, help them a little bit. But once they finally came into the classroom, it was totally different, totally different. OK, so at this point now I'm having to deal with their behavior. So I was dealing with it before, but what I had done before was I muted them. I was able to mute them. Now that they're in the classroom, you can't mute them no more. You got to actually deal with it. <laughs> so that was totally different. But I started to finally get into a groove somewhere in like the beginning of October. I started feeling so, I was like, finally, because we had started like the middle of September. So like two or three weeks in, I was like, I think I can do this. Here's where I had like the biggest struggles, okay, as a first year teacher. And maybe you might have some, maybe some of you agree. My biggest struggles as a first year teacher was having awkward conversations with parents. <laughs> uh, I did not, I feel like I didn't get trained in that when I was in school. And I'm pretty sure I probably would have in student teaching, but right when it was my turn to take over, we got shut down. So like having those awkward communications with parents, I don't know if that's gonna get better for me <laughs> cause I'm a little awkward. Cause like, like here's the thing, like at this point now, I am the authority. Um, but I have such like a, sometimes I have a playful personality and in this situation, I need to be serious and I can be serious, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, it's a little hard. So I, I do, I have like a little bit of awkward communication with, with parents, especially with the ones that are more serious. And I do have good conversations with the parents that, you know, kind of make jokes and, you know, they're just warm and opening, but those ones who like, don't even laugh when you make a joke, I'm just like, oh, oh. The thing that I keep saying, not knowing, not knowing was a really big struggle for me. I do not like to be in the dark. I would love it. Like if somebody could just write me out a real big manual and tell me, you know, this is what's supposed to happen, but this is a different year than it normally is. And so even though we're in the same building, the process is different for most of, you know, the school year. So like school opening is totally different. Breakfast, lunch, um, supplies, desk, all of that is totally different this year. Um, it's just different. And that's like stuff, like when I would go ask certain, I wouldn't just ask one person, I would ask different people. A lot of people just didn't know. Nobody knew. It was just like, we're, we're all kind of going with the flow, you know, as much as we can. And so that was a really big, a hard thing for me. Another um, piece that has been a struggle for me, it's my first year. I'm 27. I'm not like 21, but I'm like fresh out of college and I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm having to really um, learn to assert myself with my coworkers um, just because I don't, I don't want to be walked over. And I also don't want to have to go off on anybody if you get what I mean. So I'm having to learn to assert myself and let them know like, no, you know, I don't want to do that. No, I don't think that's cool. And I don't want to rock the boat, but there are just some things I'm saying no to. Like I've, I said no to being on the PTA, not because I don't believe in PTA and I don't think it's vital for the school, but I just feel like at this point right now, I have a lot on my plate and I don't want to add something else and then I crumble. 
And then another big struggle was having to adjust to getting paid once a month. That's a big struggle. And I know some people talk about that, but not a lot of people do. Okay. If you come from getting paid two times a month or weekly or whatever, and then you have to get paid once a month and you have to wait a month. Well, so like I had to wait two months to get paid. So I didn't get paid from, from the school for two months. Okay. Just, just imagine the kind of chaos. (laughs) <laughs> the kind of chaos that can occur in two months. But anyways, we made it and we're finally back on track. <laughs> um, and then the biggest thing that I feel like I struggle with and maybe some other people have been struggling with this year because of online learning and the difference and the parents not being able to come to the school this year is my work-life balance. Like, I want my parents to know that I'm here for you and I'm dedicated to this position and, you know, I'm open and welcoming for them to ask me questions and stuff. And so at the beginning, like I gave out my phone number, my personal phone number to a few people and only a few of them actually have my phone number and actually, you know, text me or whatever. Um, but that's kind of changed. I think some of them understand like, okay, let's give her a break. You know, she's, you know, had a hard day or whatever, or they'll email me. But the hard thing I've, I've been, or I was having trouble with was leaving my work at work. Like it seems so simple. I would hear people say this all the time when I was watching those teacher videos back when I wanted to be a teacher and they would always say, leave your work at work. And I was just like, oh yeah, I'm gonna do that. You know, whatever. But like lesson planning, took me forever okay I only plan one subject but having to plan something that that is not my first choice okay I'm planning writing okay I prefer to be planning math or something but planning writing which is hard for me in the first place um it takes me a long time so when I get home when I would get home I would plan 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 I would grade I would have to work on like, um, I mean, there was so much, there's like DRA testing, there's so many accommodations. And I mean, there's just so much, so much, not to mention, I still, sorry, y'all, I still haven't got my ESL certification. So, and that'll probably just show you how busy I've been, but I've been so uh, like struggling with my work life balance. And a lot of people just say, just leave it at home. I mean, leave it at school. But it's hard to do when it's your first year and you already have, like, my coworkers, they've been teachers before for years. So they already have systems in place and they have, you know, um, manipulatives and they have, like, different kind of activities that their kids can do and they have stations ready. I do not have those things. So what do I do in my free time? I'm constantly, I'm like building, building my house from the back, from the bottom, you know, whereas they already have the foundation made. And here's like a really, a really, um, vulnerable moment. I actually like in October, I actually cried in front of my class. And I was really upset at myself because I was like, how could you do this? And, you know, they're never going to respect you at this point. But it happened on a Friday and I had my principal come down and, you know, she gave me a moment, you know, let me sit in her office for a little while. And luckily it was at the end of the day. And, you know, someone came down to my classroom and worked with my kids or whatever. And I was able to just like release all of the pressure that I was holding. And then I went back to the classroom and i just i felt so bad they were crying too they went home and i was just like how can i redeem myself when they came back on monday i had told myself that things were going to be different um over the weekend i told myself that things were going to be different that like you know there were going to be some changes that were going to be like some some new systems in place i was going to make sure that i only did what i could and Um, and then I, I I needed to realize that I wasn't going to be a perfect teacher. And so like, there are some things that I just won't be able to do or fix or say in the right way. And yeah, that was in October. 
So I do feel like since then I've learned a lot. So here's what I've learned. Number one, and I'm reading this off my computer. Number one, I do not have it all together. Now I said, I say that in some of my videos, I don't have it together. Um, although I would like to, I don't, I don't have it all together. There's no way for me to have it all together. Um, just cause it's my first year. Number two, I'm not going to win the teacher of the year award this year, even though I wasn't expecting y'all get what I'm saying. I can't win teacher of the, of the year award this year anyway, but I'm just saying like, there's no way for me. I mean, if I did that, I would just be a superhuman and I am not. Okay. I am not. Um, number three, when you leave school, leave everything. Don't check an email. Do not grade. Do not bring those problems home with you. Leave it at school so you can relax. And I'm still learning this. This isn't a hundred percent gone. Like I still come home and I talk to Trey, which is my husband. I give him, I try to give him one compact story because I used to come home and tell him the whole day, but I come home and give him like a little jam packed story of what happened and then I leave it and then I go relax and that has been helping me. I go to bed on time. I'm good. Got to leave that stress there because there's not anything I can do after I have Number four, I kind of expected my, my students' parents to be like really high strung or like helicopter parents. But this year, I mean, I've been like really blessed to have a group of supportive parents because I haven't had any problems. Like anytime any of my parents have just been like, you know, like they come to me in a different way. It's not like you need to do this. They come to me and they ask me a question first before they start accusing me of doing something wrong or, you know what I'm saying? It's like the approach. Like they have been so supportive. There were things that I needed in our classroom for us to, you know, have a better, um, like a smooth transition of things. And, you know, I, I, I hated to do it, but I put my Amazon wish list and my, like I sent it out to the parents in our weekly newsletter and they bought everything on that list within like a week. And I can't tell you how appreciative I was of each and every one of them because they didn't have to do that. Um, you know, none of the stuff was for me. It was for the classroom. And yeah, I just, I, I can't get over that. And Trey always says, now, why would you think they wouldn't support you? But it's just because I don't know. I just kind of assume the worst, you know, but these parents have been absolutely amazing. Um, number five, number five, ask for help. Okay, they always tell, like when I was reading first year teacher advice, everybody says, ask for help. Y'all, it's so hard. And I know I said, oh, I'll ask for help. But my problem with asking for help this year was that when I looked around at the other staff members, they were also stressed. Okay, and I didn't want to be that person who adds more stress onto the person who's supposed to be helping me because I don't want to break you down. So I'll just break down, <laughs> which sounds crazy, but I had to learn how to ask for help. Um, and so like I am constantly asking our instructional coaches um, if they'll come in and show me how to teach a lesson because that was like a big part of my stress too. Okay, like... <laughs> Talking to my coworkers during our planning, I found that I wasn't doing some stuff right, okay? And it was because I just didn't have those conversations. I think maybe they assumed the professional development meetings that we had before school started was teaching me this stuff, but it wasn't. I mean, it was like a, it was like they glazed over this stuff. So it was just like giving us how to access it and stuff like that, but they didn't show us like the process. And so I found out in our PD meetings that I wasn't doing a lot of this stuff correct. And that might have been why the kids weren't getting the information, which was causing me a lot of stress. Um, so I started reaching out or they reached out to me, you know, to introduce themselves. And I was just honest and I let them know I have no idea what I'm doing. I would love it if you come into my classroom and if you would, you know, show me what this is supposed to look like. And I, I don't even like I, I can't thank them enough. Like there's one coach in particular she has been so amazing to me. She's so sweet. She comes in and she helps me whenever she's on campus. 
And I just appreciate her because I didn't know what I was doing. And I have a little bit of an idea now. <laughs> I may not do it just like her, but at least I understand what I'm supposed to be doing. And number six, and this was a good one for me too. Use the classroom management that works best for you. I'm going to leave that there. Okay. Um, as a first year teacher, you want to do what you see or what you hear. Um, but you have to do what works best for you because not like every group of students is not the same. They do not behave the same. They don't have the same reactions. They don't have the same, um, what is it? Intrinsic motivators. And so you just have to figure out what's going to work best for your kids. And so like, you might be going against the grain when you do it a certain way, but uh, I think as long as the kids are learning and they're engaged and they're having a good time, then you'll be fine. You'll be fine. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have for my first year or my first semester of teaching. And I didn't say this, but I'm a first grade teacher in Texas. So things may look a little bit different, but overall, I think I'm, I'm assuming that most people are probably feeling the same way. But if you're a first year teacher, and you're going through the same things, please let me know in the comments. <laughs> or if you have some tips on how to encourage another first year teacher, or maybe there are some people who are gonna start teaching in January, 2021, let us know what to do, okay? Let's just in encourage each other. And uh, yeah, I'll try not to be gone too long. <laughs> All right, y'all, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching and for still sharing and subscribing to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.